What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fail Proof Kitchen. I'm Chef Robbie Jester, winner of Guy's Grocery Games, Beat Bobby Flay, and Pressure Cooker on Netflix. And I am Jenna Fail. And today, me and Chef Robbie are going head to head with a braised short rib battle. He heard my recipe, he's been scared all morning, so I think we're gonna get started. We're gonna go side by side. We're gonna explain a little bit about what we're doing so you guys can make this at home, but it's fun, it's a great recipe. It's perfect for fall and winter, and I'm excited. She's already I'm talking about her recipe like it's the only recipe, and I just want you guys to know this is my scared face. This is what my scared face looks like. So we're Listen. gonna get started, and these recipes are good for at home. These recipes are great for fall, because apparently, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even over here making mine, but you know. I was collectively talking about us, but I will say the root beer has me very intrigued, and yeah. I can already tell that's gonna be very good, so. Yeah, a little sweet, a little salty. Something. Now what you guys don't know, but what you're gonna find out is that there's gonna be a blind taste test by the judges, which they're gonna be blindfolded and tasting to see who has the best braised short rib today. That's right. I think we should just get right into it. Let's do it. So you wanna, I, I'm gonna get started here, but if you wanna get started with yours and you can you can talk while I'm doing stuff, we'll go back and forth, right. we'll figure it out. All right, so I am going to start, I'm gonna let this heat up here for just a moment, and I'm gonna be adding some diced pancetta to my Dutch oven. So I'm gonna start out with mine. I'm gonna take these short ribs now. A good note about these short ribs is we went to the store, we looked at the short ribs, and what they had kind of like in the meat aisle and everything wasn't like great, wasn't what we wanted. Like the pack had like some thick ones, some thin ones, and we know from previous episodes that if we have things that are different sizes, they are sometimes not gonna really cook evenly. So what we did was we just grabbed our friendly neighborhood butcher and we said, hey, could you help us out? And could you maybe cut us some more that are uniform? So we got these beautiful, nice, thick, you can see the thickness there, nice marbling, but beautiful, even portions to make this fair, but also we're cooking. We want it all to cook at the same time. So I've got some olive oil in here. I've got my pancetta going. I'm gonna crisp this up. While that's crisping, I am just drying off my short ribs. I'm just gonna pat them dry so that whenever I sear them, it's gonna help it get a little bit better of a crust. <clears throat> who taught you that? <clears throat> we'll just see who has the better crust. <laughs> So I have mine, I'm just seasoning with salt and pepper here. Uh, I'm gonna season as I go. I do wanna season these and get a nice sear on them. However, uh, seasoning at this point isn't super crucial to get a lot on there because we're gonna season throughout this whole process. So I have a little bit of olive oil in my pan and I'm gonna take the, the flesh side or the side with more meat on it. And I'm gonna start searing those down first. Now, I did dip into that salt, but this is for this, so. Yep. Contaminated salt, don't do it unless you're only using that. Now, for mine, we're gonna use the standard mirepoix, so carrot, celery, onions. You'll all notice that, uh, to make things fair, I'm using the one today, <laughs> to throw back to a previous episode. It's been brought back to life, though. Robbie brought it back to life. Yeah, sometimes if you're Stove top is a little unlevel. You'll need to move things around. Maybe I'm a little aggressive. And I like to move mine around just a little bit to make sure that I'm getting good color all the way across the short rib. That reaction that we get from that browning, that equals flavor. I didn't think I was gonna be like super competitive about this. Are you? But now, I can like, feel my, it. I, I can literally feel my the tension in here. nature is like firing. I feel like you're going a lot faster than me. But I'm building depths of flavor over here, so I don't know, it might just like, be my pancetta. So I've got my onions cut up. I'm gonna go with my carrots. Now, we talked about in a previous episode, we bought these carrot sticks. Because it was a smaller, smaller amount, because we didn't wanna waste any, and sometimes, you know, if you're only cooking for a few people, it does make sense for you to just buy a smaller amount, even though by the pound, it might be a little bit more expensive. I just throw it out in the yard for the rabbits. And the deer we have. <laughs> All right, y'all, my pancetta is crisping up, so I'm gonna transfer that to a separate bowl. And you'll see all those little goody bits down at the bottom that is gonna help flavor the entire dish, but also the short ribs themselves, so. If you leave a few in there, it's fine. I'm just getting the bulk of them out. I don't want them to burn. We'll be adding them back in in a little bit. 
So I've got my carrot, celery, onions. I've got some garlic. I got some sprigs of fresh thyme here. And then a few other ingredients to talk about while we're still searing our short ribs. One is gonna be that both of us are using tomato paste today. And we're both using our favorite tomato paste. So if you can get the tomato paste that's in these little um, kind of like roll up tubes, look like a toothpaste tube almost. Uh, this is a great way to buy tomato paste because it's gonna keep the product fresh. So when you buy the little cans, the problem is like you have to really like wrap them with the plastic wrap or the foil down on top of the tomato. Otherwise it's gonna oxidize. It's gonna get a little bit weird looking and uh, it's gonna like get a, like a metallic taste and not be fresh. So these are a great way because there's only this much of it each time that's exposed to oxygen. So I'm being careful to brown the short rib on all sides. Yep. We want that crispy, beautiful flavor and texture to be on all sides of the short rib, not just the top and the bottom. Your whole house is gonna smell like short ribs. Oh, when Chris comes home later, he's gonna be sprinting to the kitchen. While those are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my carrots as well. Get those chopped along with my onion, and I'm also gonna add a shallot to mine. Now, I just wanna make a note that <laughs> Jenna didn't have shallots in her recipe earlier, but I talked about shallots off camera for something else, and now all of a sudden we have some creative inspiration. It's so, the beauty of cooking. You're like, wow, that would actually be great in there. If the shallots make the difference, I just want credit for saying that I was the inspiration for that. <laughs> I'm just doing a rough chop on these. These are going to get so soft as it convex and roasts in the oven. Is that the right way to say, as it convex, Robbie? I don't have a problem with it. I'm trying to get my uh, we'll allow kitchen it. lingo a little better. But these are gonna soften up, so just a rough chop's all you need. And I'm pulling these out so that then I can cook my my vegetables and things like that. But notice the beautiful color that we have there. Oop, missed the spot. All right, I'm not gonna lie. Robbie got a pretty good crust going on over there. That looks pretty oh, good. Oh, yours looks pretty good. You got that pancetta fat in there? I'm trying. All right. Now we're gonna go in with our vegetables all at the same time. And I know that normally when we're cooking things, I talk about just sweating them, especially when it's aromatic vegetables, like we don't want a ton of color and stuff like that. However, for this, if we get a little bit of color, that's great. We love that, the color equals flavor. This is a, this is a fall dish or a winter dish. It's meant to be super flavorful, super dark, homey, and comforting. Come in here with my shallot. Oh man, it smells good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my flame up now. And we're gonna go ahead and open our root beer just so we're prepared. Three, two, Don't do that one. at home, kids. Oop. <laughs> All right, so now that my short ribs are completely seared on all sides, I'm gonna remove them. Robbie's got the bigger cutting board today, so I'm going for a plate. Now that I have all of that flavor in the bottom of it here with the oil, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my carrots, onion, my shallot, and I roasted some garlic this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in as well. And I'm back. So we've got my mirepoix in here. It's got some good color going on. So I'm gonna add a few things. I have a little bit of ground cinnamon here, which is gonna mimic some sweet flavors. Again, it's fall. We're also gonna add the root beer. Root beer has like elements of like cinnamon and allspice in it. That little bit of cinnamon though is not gonna taste weird. It's just going to give us kind of like a fake out like sweet flavor, if you will, that's gonna go nice with the saltiness once we have well seasoned short ribs. So I'm gonna go in now with my tomato paste. That tomato paste is gonna add a gentle sweetness as well. I'm Some right beautiful with you. color. It's gonna thicken. Now I'm just gonna do this until these are slightly tender. Just make sure everything's coated and working together. So now we're gonna deglaze my pan with a little bit of the root beer. Now the root beer is gonna pull that, what we call fond is the technical term for it, but all the good little bits off the bottom and the sides of the pan. So that goes into our braise and we don't lose that to the bottom. Oh yeah. So 
So I noticed Robbie did chop his vegetables a lot more fine than I did. Um, I kind of went with more like mama's working through the day quick, I'm trying to feed them babies. That's what I did. That's how my mom hey, cut up our vegetables. So the good thing about the vegetables being larger like that is that they actually end up being like a vegetable side dish versus mine are kind of like. I like the like, bite. I do. I like the bite of them too. So I, that's I the way can't, I eat. I, I saw you cut them larger like that, and there was a part of me that went, uh, how shit, I should have done that. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of our chicken stock. Very Again, good. doing chicken stock instead of the adding of water here. The chicken stock is just going to add that much more flavor. And now we can go in with our short ribs. We go back into the pan here. Now, important note about braising is with braising, the amount of liquid that you're going to use, generally speaking, is going to be you're gonna fill up about halfway up the protein or two thirds of the way up the protein, but not cover it completely. Covering it completely is going to make it be more of like stewing and things like that. And it just uh, is a different textural element. So I'm deglazing with red wine. I'm gonna go in with two cups. Two shots of vodka. And I'm gonna let that reduce for just a couple of minutes. Then I'm gonna add some beef broth. I'm gonna pitch in a couple of our bay leaves. They're a nice little flavor adder. All right, I'm gonna go in with two cups of beef broth. And then we're gonna add back in that pancetta, top it with our short ribs, a little fresh herbs, and it's ready for the oven, Robbie. Where are you at? So I brought mine back to a simmer because I wanna give it a little leg up on being in the oven to cook. I'm tasting my broth to make sure that it is the right taste. Here's a good point with a braise, this is kind of one of the last points where I'm really truly going to be able to adjust seasoning rather than right at the end. So if it's too salty here, I want to add a little more broth, maybe a little more liquid. If it's not salty enough, I want to add a little bit more. I meant to put a little bit of red wine in mine. Yeah, like the shallots? Yep, just like the shallots. <laughs> so I'm ready to pop a lid on mine and go into the oven. Are you gonna need this? Maybe later, after we wrap. Look at those. These are coming along now. All right, I'm gonna to top it with my rosemary, a very generous helping of thyme. Just right on top. Looks beautiful. We are ready for the oven, too. That's like, that's like Pinteresty, right it there. It is. Yep. <laughs> there you go. And now we wait. And now we wait. So through the, the magic of YouTube editing. We will see you in two hours, which will feel like two seconds to you. <laughs> and then we'll pull those bad boys out and we'll give them a taste. All right, short ribs fresh out of the oven. It's the moment of truth. We're gonna plate these up. We're gonna get them tasted. We're gonna see who wins battle short rib. Now I will say, a special person came walking right through the door as we were pulling these out of the oven and that is my husband, Chris Fail. He has no clue who's pots, who's who made what. So we're actually gonna use him as a blind taste tester. And we don't even have to blindfold him because he just has no clue what's going on. So mm -hmm. I feel like he's tasted yours before. I feel like I'm I'm set up for failure. Listen, here, he won't like... he won't remember. All right, you guys, I'm gonna finish plating this up. We're gonna get the kitchen cleaned up. And Chris will be in here in just a minute. All right, so we're doing a blind taste today. I got two short ribs, one Jenna made, one Robbie made. Right off the bat, I'm gonna be a little judgmental on the presentation here. The B plate. We added some greenery here. We've got some toppings on the short rib. And then this looks like something I would make. This is just meat and potatoes and then they threw some vegetables around the side. So this definitely looks more appealing. But let's get right into it and see who's tastes the best. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that with some potato. Okay. That's really good. Be sure to get some carrots on this one since they uh, put those all around the side. Mm. This one's a little saltier. I do personally like saltier foods, so I gotta go with B. Just uh, overall presentation, the taste, everything, I'm going with B. B is the better plate. Wait, you always the gym, so. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I could have told you that. Without. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this looks like a plate I would make. This is just... <gasps> That's why I thought it would appeal to you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> I did not there pay. it is. There's the truth coming on out. I haven't tasted Robbie's yet, actually. So no, it's really good. 
I'm not, See. I'm not just saying this. <laughs> mine's definitely so much better. <laughs> Y'all see you eating mine more though. Well, I'm still comparing. Well, no, 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 no. You made your note. No, no, that, about my decisions made. Like, that's not changing.